So I'm going to start, not with this image, but this uh, troubled one. It's a, a pretty door, but not a pretty photograph. It's got problems. Obviously, I was, oh, there it is, hasty. It's uh, photographed uh, a little crookedly, in fact, in several ways, aiming up, tilted a little bit. Um, you see the stairway, obviously, along the bottom there is not looking too good. And so one of the first things I like to do is if I need to crop or straighten, I like to well get that out of the way as soon as possible. Crop. I clicked on the Crop Overlay tool. And yes, if I hover over it, I get to see a key that I could tap to bring me there. Of course, R stands for Crop. Look at the cursor as you move into the interface. It's now inviting me to rotate the image. And indeed, it's rotating the image, not the crop, as it would in Photoshop. And as you can see, you can get kind of crazy. And it's trying to maintain the aspect ratio of the original right now. How do I know that? I just looked over here on the right-hand side, and I notice it says original right there. And so if I wanted to let it just go wild, I could choose custom or if I had a particular aspect ratio in mind, I could keep that. All very sweet. I can adjust the angle via this. Or if there's a landmark, a, a, a clear horizon or a vertical that I needed to establish as perfectly vertical, that is not just a cute little icon. To say, that's what the angle thing, that's actually a tool. You pick up your bubble level, you take it out here, doo -dee -doo, and you drag it along what should be either perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal, and it will become so. I love that. No, I love this. I love the crop function here. Notice it's um, keeping the aspect ratio solid still. I can continue to resize and reshape that crop, and it keeps the angle at its uh, degree and a half rotation here. So I find a composition that I like which I'm not getting to quite rapidly enough for my taste. There we go. A little better. You might notice the grid in here. It's a, kind of the classic rule of thirds kind of deal going on here, except when I rotate. Then it shows me a finer grid so I can better line up with landmarks. I'm sorry, I digress because there is so much l loving detail here to help you get to, to get to where you need to get. Let me uh, reestablish that vertical again. There we go. Sweet. And when you're done cropping, you got this, this drawer slid out over your other panels to kind of hopefully remind you that you're in the midst of this cropping thing. You're, you're in the midst of cropping. So to tell it you're done, click back, click back here on your crop overlay icon, and that drawer retracts, and you're back to doing other things, and you get to see the cropped view. I want to remind you, though, everything in Lightroom, everything, not just keywords, not just labels, but adjustments are also metadata. In a way, you can say none of this is real. And for those of you familiar with Photoshop out there, you might know Photoshop's history panel. There's a history panel here, too, which does not evaporate when you close Lightroom. You can come back to an image in months from now and undo. Um, I don't know about you out there in the internet world, but the people in the room smiled a little when I said that. It's a, it's a happy, happy thing. <sighs> Back in time, forever. Yes, true enough. Your bad choices are there for you to see forever. Well, you can clear them, but I don't dare. Sometimes they're good life lessons.